it is but one artifact required to forge the true Dragonlance, and you need to be missing an arm to use it. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Silver Arm of Ergoth. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I am referencing DL7 Dragons of Light, the Dragonlance Chronicles, Dragonlance Adventures, Leaves from the Inn of the Last Home, The Legend of Huma, and more for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. The history of the Silver Arm of Ergoth has evolved over time, much like many tales in Dragonlance, from the original mention of the Silver Arm in DL7 Dragons of Light to the Legend of Huma and subsequent gamebooks. But if we're to distill the legend down to its essential elements, the heart of the story is consistent. That being said, given thousands of years of separation from when the Silver Arm was first used to the most recent, it's understandable that some of the details have altered in the telling. Duncan Ironweaver was a smith. His appearance is a bit of a mystery, as noted in the Legend of Huma. Usually covered in soot, the smith had an uncanny appearance. His features were a blend of elf mouth, human face, dwarf eyes, and something else in a towering body. Now, whether this is referring to the pre-Grey Gem of Gergoth smiths that Reorks created to master the power of the elements of Kryn itself before the gods of magic were born, or whether he's a true dwarf blacksmith blessed by Paladine and Reorks is unknown. Duncan describes himself as a master smith, armorer, and student of Reorks himself. What is known is that at some point, the Wormfather himself took Duncan's arm when he was a foolish young man. Some say that Duncan crafted the arm himself, though official source books make note that the silver arm of Ergoth was forged by dragon, elf, man, and dwarf during the creation of the original Dragonlances. The Dragonlances existed when Huma met Duncan, so whether Duncan made them first, or is just one more master smith in a line of smiths to craft the fabled weapon, we will never know. Now, as shocking and tragic as Duncan's tale of losing his arm to Wormfather himself is, Theros Ironfeld's story is just as, if not more, horrific. Theros was working in Solace when Fumaster Tota assigned him to be the blacksmith, crafting weapons for his troops. Theros would craft flaws in the blades out of spite. He runs afoul of the Draconians who were enslaving the populace of the town and tries to fight them without any weapons. One draconian hacks off Theros' arm just below the right shoulder, and if it weren't for Goldmoon healing him, freshly back from Zax Saroth after discovering evidence of the true gods and becoming a cleric of Mishakal, Theros would have died. He lived without an arm for some time. We can find a bit of his tale in DL7 Dragons of Light. Theros describes his tale with the companions thusly. As you remember, my friends, I struck out against the dragon men once, at the cost of my arm. Gilthanus's people were good enough to take me in, feeling that a one-armed smith could be of some use in their exile. I accompanied the Quilinesty to the edge of the channel, where we built boats to cross crude ships that now rot on the beaches. At that time I was far afield, searching for ore to forge bolts and fasteners. What I found was a ruined place, a temple toppled by the cataclysm and overgrown with ivy. Thinking of salvaging weapons or armor, I went in. What I found was this silver arm. It was in a small alcove, bare, as if it was a shrine. I picked it up, thinking it part of a suit of armor, but found it solid. I placed it against the stump of my arm, and it bonded tight. I could move it as if it were my own. It was then that I heard a deathly howl, and saw this hell beast with green, glowing eyes. I ran, feeling it hot behind me, and did not stop until I reached the beach. Portheos was amazed at my discovery, more so because it could not be removed. We searched for the temple briefly, but found nothing. Then we sailed, landing here seven days later in leaky ships. We found the Sylvanesty here already, haughty, proud elves who seem a little too cool for my taste. 
Still, they allowed me to walk through their lands, as do the wild ones, the Kaganesti. This arm has been an aid. It is as natural as my own, and I can hammer from dawn to dusk without resting. It seems to know what I need to make. One thing bothers me, though. I've been asked to make a lot of weapons. I'm afraid the elves aren't getting along too well, and it will soon be coming to a head. I really would rather not be here when it does. What we discover as the module unfolds is that an incredibly powerful Grey Wraith was the guardian of the Silver Arm, and the source of the deathly howl that Theros discovered. The specter pursued him until it was ultimately destroyed. Now, was this specter placed there to watch the arm by the Queen of Darkness to prevent the return of the Dragon Lances, or by Paladine to only let it be used by someone worthy? Well, we'll never know. Suffice it to say, however, the smith which received the silver arm benefits from its truly awesome power. It appears as a human arm from the shoulder blade to the hand. It magically alters the orientation to the wearer whether the left or right arm is missing. Once placed against the stump, it grafts itself to the wearer. It cannot be removed by any known magical or mundane method. Its surface appears as pure dragon metal and cannot be tarnished. The bearer must be one of incredible strength, and it actively heals them of any wounds while it is bonded to them. The arm also enhances the wearer's strength and stamina, allowing them to work tirelessly for days at a time. While the arm is required to forge true dragon lances for any smith but Theros Ironfeld, they are also required to use the Hammer of Honor, or the Hammer of Keras. It is said that Theros' skill as a smithy was such that he did not need the hammer. Now, <laughs> this of course could just be a retcon explanation, because the hammer of Karras was in Thorbarn during the war and was not sent to the Monument of the Silver Dragon. In any case, throughout all recorded time, the Silver Arm's history and creation, as well as its fate, is lost to history. We do know that Theros Ironfeld returned to the Kikonesti Elves in southern Aragoth after the War of the Lance, so perhaps the Silver Arm is in his tomb. It would be an interesting artifact to quest for in the Age of Mortals. But that is all I have to say about the Silver Arm of Aragoth. What do you think of the history of the arm and its use? If you were a smith, would you intentionally lose your arm to wield it? And finally, do you think it will ever resurface at the end of the Age of Mortals? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... I don't want to fight evil. I just want to go home. Is that too much to ask?